To start the 2007 season, TCU had a home opener against Baylor, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Tommy Blake disappeared a couple of weeks before the game. And when I say the term disappeared, I want you to understand this. I actually mean he disappeared because nobody knew where he went. I've never said anything like this before on this channel, but the story I'm about to share with you guys and girls, it is bewildering. I've never been this confused, I've never been this stumped when doing research for a video like this one. And that's what makes this story beyond fascinating, because it really is an unsolved mystery even till this day. Tommy Blake. Now I know what you're sitting there saying, yo Matt, who is Tommy Blake? That's a great question. The reason you have no idea who Tommy Blake is, is because he disappeared. Nobody knows what happened, therefore, that's why nobody talks about this story. And I'm telling you up front, that's why I myself am so intrigued by this. Tommy Blake was a star, an absolute star football player for the TCU Horn Frogs in the early 2000s. He was so good, a matter of fact, ESPN had a preseason All-American list, and he was listed as a potential top 10 draft pick for the 2008 NFL Draft. We're not talking about a second, third, or even a first round pick, we're talking about a top 10 pick. Every article out there would tell you this guy was a lock to be a first round pick. But right before the 2008 season, which would be his last and final year, he left the team. He disappeared. Nobody, not me, nobody at all knew what happened. Everybody was left in the dark. They're like, yo, where's Tommy Blake? And this didn't go on for a couple of days. This went on for weeks. But check this out. When he came back, he left again only a couple weeks later. And even till this day, nobody really knows what happened back then. And nobody even knows what's going on now. This is without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, one of the biggest mysteries in not just college football, but any college sport. And in today's video, we're going to get to the bottom of it, or at least try to. There's many questions, and I mean many, many, many questions being asked, and most of them are unanswered. But however, we're going to get to the bottom of the one and main question. What really happened to Tommy Blake? Real quick, real quick, before we get into this video, I want to say major shout out to Deets. He left this comment on one of the previous story videos, and without this comment, we would not be making this video at all. He stated at the end of his comment, here's two ideas if you do more. Tommy Blake, TCU. As I was scrolling through the comments and I saw that, I almost just went past it. I was like, eh, I ain't never heard of Tommy Blake. Who is this guy? But then for some odd reason, I was like, well, let me do a little bit of research, and yeah, it intrigued me to say the least, and here we are. So I want to give credit when it's due. Major shout out to Deets if you're watching this i hope you enjoy and also to you guys as well i'm telling you these story videos are mainly based off of your recommendations i only want to make videos you guys want to see so if there's any other crazy stories like this please either send it to me on instagram twitter or comment it down below i'm gonna leave it at this you're in for a treat with this one get you a popcorn get you a snack whatever you like to eat when you watch a video because trust me i do the same thing and also real quick this video took a lot and i mean a lot of research time and effort so if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed it mean a lot if you do subscribe it's 100 percent free we got one of the best communities out there consider joining like i said if not you don't if you don't want to join that's cool all right matt blah blah, blah should have grab up now without further ado let's get into it seriously whenever you subscribe it means a lot and it helps out the channel tremendously Getting into Mr. Tommy Blake's story, there's not too much to say about his high school career and life, and I don't want to bore you, you know how it goes. He dominated. The only fun fact about his high school career that I do want to mention and throw in there is that he was a running back in high school, and then when he got to TCU, Gary Patterson switched him over to defensive end. And you don't got to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. The reason Gary Patterson switched him over to defensive end is because he had great size, great speed, and he was an athlete. And as a freshman in 2004, I'd say he was solid. He had 23 total tackles with five sacks. And you gotta remember, this is 2004. Teams weren't passing it 40 times a game. Nowadays, you see somebody get five sacks, you're like, eh, I mean, who cares? But back then, I would say that was pretty dang good. Fast forward in time in the next season, 2005, he was even better. He had 56 total tackles and seven sacks. In that 2005 season, he was the Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, and he got All-American honors. In 2006, not too much to say there. It was a carbon copy pace from 2005, 54 tackles and seven sacks, eerily similar. But still rather less, he was regarded as one of the best players in the country. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's where our story takes a drastic and I mean a very drastic turn. Many people speculated, hey, after this junior year, which was in 2006, he should have declared for the NFL draft. He was ready to go, and he would have for sure been a first, second round pick. But for some odd reason, Tommy Blake felt like he had unfinished business, and he decided to come back for a senior season. Which, no big deal at all. He's going to improve his draft stock, and he'll get even more money. Not a big deal. But here's the problem with that. 
he didn't come back for his senior season. He didn't come back at all. To start the 2007 season, TCU had a home opener against Baylor. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Tommy Blake disappeared a couple of weeks before the game. And when I say the term disappeared, I want you to understand this. I actually mean he disappeared because nobody knew where he went. This isn't like you and one of your old high school buddies, y'all fell off, you don't talk anymore, and you're like, oh yeah, he kind of disappeared when you're saying it to be ironic. No, this is unironically, he disappeared. So with questions being asked everywhere, people started making up outlandish rumors. Check this out. The rumors began and everything from drug use to steroid abuse Used to Blake leaving to go into ministry was suggested as a reason for his abrupt departure. None of that was true. After a couple weeks went by, he did come back for the start of the regular season, but then, after only a couple of games, he disappeared in the middle of the season. I think we can all agree, very weird and strange, right? He's gone for three to four weeks, he comes back for the first two or three games, and then he's gone for another four to five weeks. What's going on? And meanwhile, let me give you some context. TCU, they're not giving out any information on this subject and manner. Nobody's releasing information, everybody's just saying, yeah, we don't know what's going on with him either. At the time when Tommy Blake disappeared, here's the only thing he had to say about it. It was a problem between myself and my family, and I needed some time to deal with it. I dealt with it. He said that when he disappeared the first time, but when he disappeared the second time, he didn't say anything at all. And let me break this down if you are somewhat confused. Yet again, three weeks before the home opener in their first game, he disappeared. He disappeared for three weeks, but he came back for the home opener. He comes back, plays in the first couple of games, then he disappears again for four to five weeks in the middle of the season. So that is where we're at in our story. I know I might have confused you, I didn't mean to, but let's get a move on. When he disappeared for the second time, this is where the questions start to arise because when he came back at the end of the season, he was 20 to 30 pounds overweight. When he came back to TCU from his absence, it was clear and obvious he was sluggish, slow, and not the same player. In that 2007 season, missing a lot of games, he only wound up finishing the year with 17 tackles and four sacks. You could tell, okay, yeah, this guy, he has potential, but you could also see in his game, something was going on behind the scenes. And here's where things get a little dicey. What was going on? After Tommy Blake's season ended, his agent would come out with some information in February of 2008 and state that Tommy Blake was being treated for depression and social anxiety disorder. Okay, that's great. At least we got some information. But here's another question. Why didn't anybody say this before? Why didn't he say it or why didn't TCU say it? The reason for that is fairly simple. Privacy laws. TCU was prohibited from actually disclosing that information to the public. So that is the one piece of this story that does actually make some sense. Although we got one answer, the answer led us up to even more questions. What was he depressed about and why did he have social anxiety so bad that he couldn't even play football? Well, here's where things get interesting to me because I've never seen anything like this before in my life covering all these stories. And I've been doing this for four years. Apparently and allegedly, Tommy Blake was simply overwhelmed with all the NFL scouts calling him 24-7 before that senior year where he was projected to be a top 10 NFL pick. He was so stressed out about being this next big thing and being this next multimillionaire, he couldn't take it anymore. It was too much. And here's one of the only quotes we have about this situation to back it up. Here's what Gary Patterson had to say. And may I remind you, this was in 2007. Maybe it was a little bit of the pressure of everything. A lot of things going through a kid's mind. We will give him time to do what he needs to do. We know what he can do on the field. You see it right there at the beginning. He stated maybe it was a little bit of the pressure of everything. To go on top of that, after doing a lot of more digging and research, I found this on Reddit from seven years ago, which somebody stated, he said, referring to Tommy Blake, that while he was at TCU, he was getting around 300 daily phone calls from scouts, which spurred depression and social anxiety disorder. I am going to tell you guys, take that with a grain of salt, because this is some random account on Reddit that stated this seven years ago. But I do got to say, kind of adds up to our story, doesn't it? So I did some more digging research, and another person on Reddit from seven years ago stated, the summer going into that year, he changed his number five times and the scout still got his new one and called him nonstop. Under that, somebody added, I suffer from depression and social anxiety disorder too. I can't imagine how much worse it would be with that kind of pressure. And here's the last one I'm going to read to you from Reddit because it gives you a different perspective. That whole saga was crazy. He had an amazing year capped off by us creaming NIU, which they played in the bowl game, I believe. Then the dude fell off the deep end and could never recover. If you're familiar with your TCU history, he was basically Jerry Hughes before Jerry Hughes came around. There's many more comments like this, I think you get the point, but here's my question. Was the pressure that bad enough to where he just couldn't take it anymore? Hey, I get it. As a man myself and as men watching this, you guys know this. I hate to say it, but it's the cold hard truth. 
we aren't allowed to have feelings. We aren't allowed to feel sad. As men, we are told, hey, suck it up. That's what life's about. Just move on and keep grinding. Sometimes as a man, though, just continuing to hold those emotions in and being stressed and, for example, in this situation, being depressed, it can get to you. It really can. So to Tommy Blake and any man struggling with anything, I have empathy for you. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. Life, it is fun. I Trust me, I try to have fun every day and smile, but life is also hard. With that being said, though, I'm still sitting here confused because you played football your entire life. Even if you was going through social anxiety and you didn't like all these NFL scouts calling you 24-7, just turn off the phone. I'm not saying it isn't true, but it does seem like a scapegoat to say, oh yeah, well he had anxiety and a lot of pressure. That's why he just quit randomly showing up to practice. It seems a little fishy to me because I know when I'm sad, the best way to take my mind off of being sad is to go to the gym, clean up around the house, mow the grass, just to stay busy. Because when I'm busy, I don't have time to sit there and go, I'm sad. With Tommy Blake, and I almost forgot to bring this up, there was also rumors going on that when he disappeared from TCU, he went back home to his family and all he did was eat. And when I say all he did was eat, they just said, yeah, he just sat at home, watched TV, and he ate food. That was a rumor going on where you can say and argue. I mean, it's a legit rumor because when he came back to TCU, he was 20, 30 pounds overweight. It's odd, man, it really is. But continuing along here, it was even stated that he looked disinterested at times and was still incredibly out of shape by season's end. Remember, this was a guy who was projected to be a top 10 NFL draft pick, and now there was major red flags and concerns. Obviously, it goes without being said, I shouldn't have to say this, you should know this, he fell down the draft boards. And when I say he fell down the draft boards, that's probably sugarcoating it because he actually fell off the draft boards. He went undrafted in the 2008 NFL Draft. He did wind up signing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an undrafted free agent, and here's what he had to say about things going on off the field, where he still was dodging the questions. Tommy Blake stated, There's ups and downs to life. A lot of people deal with a lot of things. Unfortunately, I had to deal with some things. I'm not really going to talk about it too much after this. I'm here to play football now. As you can see right there, still avoiding the questions and not giving us any clarity as to what really went on and happened. And nothing ever happened with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He didn't even play a snap form, and that is the end to his college, or not just his college career, my bad, but his football career. He never played a snap in the NFL, and here's why I'm so bewildered by this story. I can't find anything about this guy anywhere. I probably did five hours of meaningless research trying to find out something. I've never had a story like this. In every single story I've done on this channel, I can find out what happened to these guys. There's nothing on YouTube. There's nothing on Instagram. There's nothing on Twitter. There's nothing on Google. Nothing anywhere you look. Nothing on Reddit. Nothing. But, and I have a big but, that is the great thing about our channel and our community. This video is going to get out to somebody that knows where Tommy Blake currently is or knows him personally. And to that I say this, let us know in the comment section, fill us in, what happened to Tommy Blake after his football career? And also, let us know, how's he doing mentally? I mean seriously, where is this guy? Is he even alive? And my biggest question about all this is, why hasn't anybody talked about it? Why has nobody shared this story? Why am I the first to do this? Just seems odd to me that we had a guy who was projected to be a top 10 NFL draft pick, out of nowhere, he quits playing football and no stories made up about it whatsoever. Tommy Blake, if you're out there somewhere, let us know how you're doing. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more story times, subscribe to the channel. It's 100% free, like I've stated 10,000 times. And yeah, bye bye bye. Right away, Billy!